There's no denying it. When it comes to dental imaging, there are many factors that influence image quality. From not setting up the machine properly to making common but easily avoidable patient positioning mistakes. Well, that's all about to change. Hi, my name is Shannon Young. and I'm a service technician with Henry Schein Dental. In this video, we'll be diving into the world of dental imaging. I will be walking you through how to recognize common preparation and patient positioning errors and how to fix them so you can take more accurate, high quality images each and every time. But before I forget, if you find this content useful, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the Henry Shine Dental YouTube channel. Okay, let's get started. There are three major components when it comes to taking perfect panoramic images for high quality. The first one being equipment prep. Equipment prep can come down to the height of the machine of which the patient will be stepping in, making sure that there is no jewelry to interfere with radiation causing scatter across your images. You also don't want any hearing aids, lead aprons in the way, glasses to interfere with the focal trough, or any other jewelry that the patient may have on. Some jewelry, such as higher studs in the nose or eyebrow, may not interfere in the focal trough of 2D panoramic imaging. You do want to remove them for 3D imaging, as they can cause scatter across the focal trough. Use of lead aprons may have different laws depending on your jurisdiction. Please check with your local laws to see if they're applicable. The second component would be patient positioning errors. They are quite common and they are very easily avoidable. The first thing you want to make sure of is proper patient positioning on the bite block. There are many images where the patient bites beyond the bite stick, not quite in the correct orientation, or not making proper contact with the bite stick, leaving a gap in between the smile on the image. Another component with patient positioning errors is layer light positioning of the mid-sagittal line, which goes directly down the patient's face, which you wanna line up in between the eyes. The second layer light is your Frankfurt horizontal plane. You want to line that up between the trachea of the ear across the orbital bone, keeping it parallel to the floor at all times. The third layer light would be your canine light or your PA light. You want to keep that right on the middle of the canine or PA. That way you have a great focal trough for your panoramic. Focal trough in some panoramic equipment is automatic. There are others that you do have to adjust and you may have to move depending on the patient's anatomy or bite. You may have patients that have trouble standing straight up which is a big component to eliminating spine compression in your images. It may be best to sit those patients in a chair and allow them to lean back in the chair while still holding on to the equipment. This way you can have the shoulders dropped to allow for a clean sweep of the tube head around the patient while still eliminating spine compression. Taller patients with a higher center of gravity may have a tendency to sway. It is also best to sit those patients down in a chair as well as small children who may want to fidget inside of the panoramic unit. Some patients have a tendency to follow the track of the tube head as it goes around them. It is best to have those patients close their eyes so they do not want to make those same movements. A concern many practices have when it comes to patient positioning is wheelchair access for their panoramic units. Many manufacturers are ADA compliant that allow their machines to go down low enough to accommodate for patients in wheelchairs. There are some instances where a patient's handles on their wheelchairs may make it difficult for the tube head to make a clean sweep all of the way around. In these cases, you may have to move your patient to a chair that does not have a back on it to allow this smooth travel. The final component in your panoramic imaging comes down to your patient. You may have the machine set up perfectly. Your patient may be positioned just right, but as soon as you're taking the image, the patient will move. If the patient moves, it can cause anatomy on one side to be larger than the other. They may tilt their head slightly down. They may move their tongue. When these things happen, it can affect the image quality and your overall image. When it comes to preparing your machine, you want to make sure that you start off slightly higher than the patient's height. This will make the patient stand up taller, stretching out their neck to reach up to the bite stick. This is the first step in eliminating spinal compression. So I'll have the patient step up. I will lower the machine down to where it's just above her nasion. 
a little bit lower. So Caitlin, go ahead and step in and you're gonna place your teeth right in between the two grooves on the bite stick. At this point, you can turn on your layer lights. You can lower the machine slightly down. I do recommend placing a hand on the back of the patient's head if they are comfortable with it. This will allow for them to lower their head and not the rest of the body, which is a common mistake. I'm gonna lower this down. Not, oh, so you moved your whole body down, so we're gonna move up. We're just gonna tilt your head, okay? That's good. At this point, we're gonna lower the Frankfurt horizontal light, and you wanna make sure that it's just at the tragus on the ear. Perfect. And just above the orbitals. You wanna make sure that the canine light is where it needs to be. You're gonna want your patient to have a slight smile. That's great. The mid-sagittal laser does need to be between the eyes and not on the nose. Our noses are not perfectly symmetrical on our faces, whereas the middle of our eyes is with the middle of our dental anatomy. This machine has an autofocus feature for the focal trough. This is available from some manufacturers, but not others. If the adjustment has to be made, you will have a layer light either just below the chin rest or there will be something on the touch pad that will allow you to move the patient's head forwards or backwards. We wanna make sure that we're perfectly aligned in the focal trough, as if a patient is too far forward, you may get a lot of spine in the image and smaller dental anatomy. The anterior teeth will appear much smaller than the posterior anatomy. We then want to close the temple supports on the patient's head. The first thing you wanna do is close your nasian region to where it just touches the forehead. You then want to close on the side of the patient's head. Many of these supports will stop on their own once they feel resistance. These can be important to the trajectory of the rotation of the tube head assembly. Many times when the image is done capturing, the tip supports will release on their own and this will allow the patient to step out freely. There are many different types of panoramic units for patient positioning. For entry methods, there are front facing, such as this unit. There are side facing units where you have a head on shot of the patient. For these front entry units, many manufacturers include a mirror that can tilt to allow for proper visual of the patient for aligning your layer lights. When your patient is in the machine and they are standing up nice and straight, you should have a good clearance between the shoulders. You may have some patients that have really broad shoulders. That would be the case where you may want to sit them down and have them lean back to drop that shoulder height. I'm gonna show you a rotation of this patient so you can see that it clearly goes all the way around without making contact with the patient's shoulders in this position. And here we go. So at this point, the machine will go all the way around, avoiding contact with the patient's body at all points. If you do have a patient that has broad shoulders and the machine makes contact, it can cause patient movement. The patient's head may tilt from left to right, or it may cause the head to tilt to the side, or the shoulders to actually move causing the entire shot to be out of alignment and out of the focal trough, which is the sharpest point of the image. Another method to help the patient's spine elongate and the shoulders to drop is to have your patient step slightly into the machine with their feet. I'm gonna have the patient walk in, placing their hands on the handles. So go ahead and come in. They're gonna place their teeth onto the bite block. We get our lasers lined up, making sure that everything is just where we need it. You then place your foot a little bit further up into the machine than theirs. I'm gonna have you take a couple of steps forward till your feet touch mine and lean slightly back, please. Stand up straighter, just a little bit. There we go. When the patient steps their feet in, it helps to drop their shoulders when they lean back, allowing for clearance. 
This method is exceptionally helpful for patients with broad shoulders. Once your patient steps into the machine, you're going to want to adjust your layer lights. Some of them may come on automatically, or you may have to actually hit the light function to get them to power on. Your temple supports may have buttons on the touchpad or on the physical machine. You can close and open by pressing the buttons. Some may use a touchscreen with a capacitive touch. Others may have physical buttons that have to be pressed. When it comes to patient positioning, you also have to consider your patient size for the proper KBNMA. Many manufacturers have several functions that you can choose from and sizes. On most machines, they will default to an average size patient. In this example, the highlighted patient is the average size, and that would be considered most adults in a room. You may have a patient who is larger. This would be anybody that has a very large frame, very large jaw anatomy, very broad shoulders, or quite tall. You would then choose a larger function. You may also have patients with lower bone density who are still of average patient size, but due to conditions or age, may have lower bone density. You can then choose the next patient size down. This patient size can also be used for adolescents. The next size down would be for your pedo size patients. Always use discretion when choosing the proper KBNMA and notate those settings in the patient's chart for future use. I'll have you bite down into the bite stick. We're going to check our lasers and make sure we are still good in the line from the tragus across the orbital bone, and our mid-sagittal line is also right down the middle. This would be a good positioned patient. With this shot, we should have good access to the condyles, a nice slight smile across the image, and good definition of the roots. If a patient was positioned too low, I'm gonna go ahead and move it down. You may have spine compression. You will also have a giant joker smile. With this shot, the hard palate would also be in the way obstructing the roots of the upper anteriors. If a patient was too high, you would have a frown. That large frown would then make the lower anterior teeth much smaller. It would also raise out of the focal trough those upper anteriors. They would be very blurry and hard to diagnose. We're going to line our patient up again, making sure that they are good there. Let's go ahead and place your hands onto the supports. Take a slight step in with your feet, please. Great. When your patient is in position, you want to ask them to place their tongue up against the roof of their mouth. One thing that happens is some patients, they only place the tip of the tongue up against the roof of their mouth. This does not raise the rest of the soft tissue up against the palate. You want full palate contact with the tongue and then have your patients take one last swallowing breath. This will act as suctioning the tongue to the roof of the mouth and keeping it out of placement while the image is being captured. Another technique is to make sure that the patient keeps their lips closed so that the soft tissue does not interfere with the upper anterior roots. Well, there you have it, the ins and outs of dental imaging. We hope you enjoyed this video and that you and your team will feel more confident problem solving common issues going forward. If you have any questions, visit our website to connect with one of our dedicated service technicians. And don't forget to click that subscribe button as well as the bell icon to be notified of all future Henry Shine dental videos.